Welcome to my lab tour. Please note I did not say production rack tour because the goal here is function over form. Doesn't mean I didn't take the time to organize things. My goal is to show you how I set this up and maybe give you some tips on how to set yours up as well. And that's why it doesn't look as pretty because I've got all these little extra labels on things because it's important to know if I wanted to test a switch, which cable I plugged in, where that relates to in these ports up here, and how I keep this organized. This is what allows me to do my videos and my testing and learning. And yes, I'm always learning this stuff. And well, that's often what leads to a video, a question or sometimes a client setup. And well, we lab it out right here. That's why there's a variety of things like this NetGate, this Alta Labs, the Cisco, and several different devices from Unify. Then over here is where I have my storage servers, which besides my videos, which are technically kind of production, there's just a lot of other things in here we're going to be talking about how those are all set up. Now, I've done the how to build a networking side of the lab. You'll find that video down below. So this is more of the hardware manifestation of it and how I have things configured. So let's get started. But first, a word from our sponsors, our friends at Ninja One. Ninja One automates the hardest parts of IT, empowering more than 20,000 IT teams with streamlined visibility, security, and the control over their endpoints. Ninja One's reputation is built around an obsession with customer success. They won the 2024 SC Media Award for Best Customer Service, and its platform consistently earns rave reviews for its ease of use and release schedule. Learn about how your organization can benefit from Ninja One's automated patch management, cross-platform mobile device management, free warranty tracking, and more at ninjaone.com. Now we'll start down here at the bottom. This is a weird little LED thing that I have mounted upside down. It's supposed to be kind of like a rack light. It's stupid. No one should buy it. I'll leave a link down below because there are people like me who apparently think they should buy it. Uh, this is just sitting here right now. It just kind of makes it reflective. This is just a 1U rack plank with a sticker on it. Uh, we put these on when we do structured cabling projects so people can find us next time. These are extreme power P91s. I say plural because there's one in the other rack. Normally for production, of course, you'd put two in one rack, one group of power supplies on one and the other side of the power supplies on the other. But this is enough for my pseudo production rack. I call it pseudo production because technically my videos I do consider production, but I'm not too worried about it. And not all the devices I have have dual power supplies. And this is a nice online double conversion UPS. And I'll leave links to these down below so you can find any of the product titles on here. So if you're looking for the exact same model I have, you'll be able to find it. This is the latest addition to the rack. This is the 45 Drives HL8. This is part of their Home Lab series. That's what the HL stands for. And the HL8 is a pretty cool little box. I haven't done a review as of the recording of this, but a review is coming. That's also why I have some of these shelves in here without rack mount, because occasionally I have non-rack mount devices in here. I really like this system. Works well. It's uh, been impressive so far, but of course, full review coming soon. Now going up from there, I do have some rack mount devices. I have my Synology, the Unify NAS, the True NAS, and another 45 drives box. This is the HL15 Home Lab by 45 drives. And uh, this is mounted on rack rails and so is the True NAS. I like the fact that it's got this little cover on it, which actually works for keeping a little bit of the dust out. It does look nice without it, but you know, if we can keep any dust out, that's always handy, but it's really not too dusty down here uh, for the most part, but I like it. I did find some old stickers with the original TrueNAS logo on it. Uh, kind of novel. I like the old shark logo they used to have. You know, new logo is fine and all, but uh, I put those stickers on there so they look cool. Now these boxes are all the same, except the one case shipped differently. We ordered them all three at the same time, just one of them came with a different face, which is kind of annoying. But uh, Ryzen 1 XCPNG, Ryzen 2 XCPNG, many of my XCPNG videos are done on this. Uh, this one sometimes is called Ryzen 3, sometimes it's called Proxmox, sometimes it's called whatever we load on it for testing. So this sometimes becomes part of this or it's on its own for me to experiment. Sometimes there's a new beta or alpha release and I don't want to mess with my lab system here and mess any of it up because this has got so many different random things I run like like Docker containers and things like that. I don't want to mess with those. That is my like reload it and do whatever I want with this system. And this Synology hiding up here at the top is a Synology DVA 1622. This is running all the camera systems I have here. I've done a video on that before and you'll find it also linked down below. Now moving on to this side of the lab, I have these labeled up here because these power on or off the different devices. So if I want the Alta Labs on or off, I do this. And if I want to turn the Cisco on, I flip that switch right there. 
I have a UDM Pro Max. This is my lab one, not my production one. And uh, the NetGate device. And if I turn this on, that'll fire that up. I don't currently have this uh, EFG on a switch because of the dual power supply. It just stays on right now. It's also currently in testing, so I have some upcoming videos and reviews for working on that one. But part of the reason I use these right here, and this is just simply patch panels without keystones inserted, these will allow me to keep the wires kind of organized here as they go through. And each of these is labeled in Unify. So this is my Unify Switch Pro, and those come down and come back out right here and go to each of the individual devices. And as I said, if you look at my video where I talk about how I do the network engineering lab, you get a better idea of like how I separate these and how they work. Now let's talk about these and how they correspond to what's up here. These are labeled right here, one through eight, and this allows me to tie to ports one through eight on the Unify switch. Then we also have a couple other ones labeled over here that tie to these two keystones. And the reason for that is these are PoE++ ports on this side of the Unify. So I just have a couple plus plus ports over here, and these are standard PoE ports for when I want to power on devices. Now these cables just all run down the side of the rack here. They are all individual and generally loose, but they are tied together tight on the side of the rack here. But they're long enough for me to set things up in any one of the positions here. Because what I do is lab things out, such as I want to test this particular Unify. I'll say, all right, this is going to plug into uh, port 5. And I can map port 5 either to my system and my network or one of these other devices. I can actually then plug in something over here and plug it into the Cisco switch or plug it into the NetGate box and start building out the different VLANs and different networks for any of my lab environments. If I wanted to set up a site-to-site -site VPN between like this NetGate and one or two of these unifies up here, I would do that all virtually and then I could put other devices right here. I do it all with VLANs because it's a lot easier to do. As I said, I referenced that in my lab video. This is why there's a long list of VLANs like 101, 102, 103, 104, because when you have a lot of separate networks that you want to build out for some type of environment, this is really convenient and having everything labeled helps a lot. Now, I do really recommend these rack studs. They make this way easier to do and easier to swap things out. You put the rack studs in, they clip in, it gives you a couple studs to hang the device on so you don't have to have two people while you try to line the screw holes up. You can just set it there and spin the little rack studs on. Now, I know not everyone's a fan of this, but for convenience, on both of these racks, I utilize the back side of the rack. So we're actually standing behind it right now. So we have this Unify switch, and then this is the actual Unify Dream Machine that runs my network right now. I just did a recent video talking about swapping that out here for what I used to have was a PF Sense, uh, And this is the internet feed that just goes up and over behind me to a standard cable modem box. Unfortunately, we don't have fiber where I'm at. Uh, then from there, the UDM uplinks at 10 gig to this. And then here's lots of DAC cables. Here's a Synology that I have sitting back here. This just has some backups on it. And once again, it's another Synology that I use for test scenarios. And it pairs up with well with the Synology when I'm doing replication from Synology to Synology. I've done several videos on that. Now down a little further, I do have this CyberPower, which is double-sided. So it's got plugs on both sides to distribute power. And I bought some of these colored cables. There's not actually any color coding although I did put important power as a label on this because this does run my UDM Pro Max and this is critical to keeping the network up and running. Now this is just another lab computer down here. I just have it in this case. It normally actually comes with a glass top. I'll find the model of the case and leave a link for those interested. Uh, but this allows me to set some cards in there, do some testing. I have some upcoming videos I'm doing on Olama. So it's got a graphics card in here for processing, but it's just a basic AMD build. And for convenience, it's got a couple uh, 10 gig DAC ports right here that'll just link back up to the Unify switch above. And then a little bit further down, is a rack mounted drawer that I have back here. I just keep a keyboard and some cables in here. I'll have some miscellaneous stuff. I had it and I didn't want it on the front because I don't use it that often, but I actually don't use the keyboard that often as I'm usually connecting with a KVM or IPMI, but uh, it's just convenient, so I threw it back here. Now this is the back of the enclosed rack with all the servers in it. This is fed 
by fiber from the other side. And then this feeds a, another switch we'll get to next. But this is a USW Pro aggregation switch. And it gives me a few 25 gig ports because some of these servers back here, those Ryzen ones, the three of them all have 25 gig connections on there. I was starting to do some color coding. Maybe I'll come back and revisit this and use some different cables. But these DAC cables are orange. And I was like, okay, I'll use the orange for storage. So that's what they go to. Then I ran out of orange and this black one happens to also go to some of the storage servers. So, so much for color coding, but DAC does come in different colors and maybe one day I'll uh, repurchase some new ones. But for now, this is working and there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. This is just another switch to cover all the IPMI and some of the things that don't have DAC. But as I'd mentioned in another video, use DAC in your rack as much as possible, especially these nice 25 gig connectors. I still got a couple ports open. You may have noticed there's three servers with only two plugs in. Well, I haven't hooked the other server up yet, but I do have a 25 gig cable I'm gonna run over to that. Now a valid concern someone might have is aren't these servers pushing out heat this way and the switches blowing heat that way? Yes, but it's so little heat, it's not a big deal. These switches are actually running quite cool and there's just enough drop from where these are going up so the heat vents out versus these servers, the fans are just below the edge of this. So this has still got good airflow, but that's the reason you don't necessarily wanna block all of this with switches. And I know some people may not even like the switches being at the back here, but having them at the back uh, isn't an airflow problem in this situation, but everyone's situation is gonna be different. It's just a consideration. But I like having them back here because this allows all these cables to come down and route this way without having to be wrapped around to the front. I just don't really like that. I still use the same cable management here where I get these keystones because it, well, DAC cables fit through keystone holes with no keystones in them just fine. Maybe I'll make this better by putting keystones in here, but I kind of just didn't see the need. This doesn't change very often on this side at all. This, as I said, just goes to the couple devices and mostly the IPMI of these devices for lights out management. So not a lot more goes into this. Now I mentioned the 45 drives HL15 and the TrueNAS Mini are both on rack rails. I've left some slack here, so I've got the cable so they'll slide out. I just gotta be careful so it doesn't snag on anything. They do make some pretty cool contraptions that will allow for all the cable management to be done better, kind of like accordions up. I don't have any of those back here. I don't move these out enough, so it's a big deal. And coming around to the back to make sure that I push them from this side to get them out, that makes it you know, easy enough. I didn't see the need to put the extra complexity of that in there, but I just let the cables hang with a little bit of slack and I have Velcro holding things just a little bit loose. Actually, all of these are just sitting here. And if I want to even push these forward, there's enough slack. Well, I got this one a little tight with the power cord, but it'll push forward far enough or I'll just unplug them when I want to slide them out because getting around to the back of here, really inconvenient for recording like I'm doing. And that's why the lighting probably looks so poor, uh, but easy enough for me just to walk around these and come to the back and just push them out as far as I need them to go. Now tucked away back here is my house and studio cabling. I didn't want it in a rack for convenience. This way I can simply run a new cable and don't have to try to figure this out at the top of the rack. This is kind of just a simplicity thing where I didn't want it tied to the main rack itself. It just kind of sits next to it right here. This is, like I said, mostly convenience. It's relatively well labeled because I label each run as I do them. That way, if I ever have to move things around, I don't have to worry about the port labels. I do label all my ports and the software in the Unify, but it's nice in case there's ever a problem, I know exactly which cable goes where. Now, this one cable here happens to feed the home assistant and that's what's sitting on top here. The home assistant just has a little PoE splitter. It's a Raspberry Pi 4. This dongle controls Zigbee and Z-Wave. I know people get upset that I'm not virtualizing it, but I like it being a separate dedicated box. That way, any type of maintenance being done on other areas of my server never affects home assistant. It's always available to control the lights or any of the other functions that it controls. This is the auto-generated topology that Unify does. My UDM Pro Max is currently my firewall. I talked about in the previous video, so I've done PFSense for a long time. I decided for this particular location, my house, my studio, to uh, give this one a try, and it's worked quite well. It's kind of nice having everything in one place. The back of rack, that USXG16 that I showed earlier, 
this one I've had for years and never had a problem with it. So I've just left it in production, even though I've got some of these newer ones. And then I probably could consolidate things because I have plenty of open ports on like this US Pro aggregation. But I like testing out some of the older switches along with some of the new ones. So you kind of get the idea of the flow for how all of this connects. And then my Wi-Fi and everything is powered off of the US W Pro HD 24. That also connects to my studio bench. I have also some 10 gig ports on that. The studio bench is also one of the older US XG6 PoE. For those that have been following my channel for a while, this gets commented on whenever I bring this up, that the in-wall HD, there's some problem with it. I don't know what. It's actually a cabling problem because the link speed won't go over 100. It always links and lets me know it's got a slow link speed. It's just been low on my priorities to fix because the only thing it's connected to it is a brother printer. So I get this little notice of poor ethernet link speed, but uh, it just got a, well, oddly, uh, one of the Chromecast is running off of it right now. I'm not sure why it is, but uh, the brother printer is mostly what it runs. So I don't worry about it too much. My printing doesn't need to get there any faster. And one of those, it, it ain't broke enough for me to worry about it just yet. Now, besides the Home Assistant running with that PoE splitter for a Raspberry Pi 4, there's a few other Raspberry Pis floating around in the rack and also like sitting right here. I just use these out of convenience for testing because now I can plug in one cable, boot up a little box that runs Linux and maybe do some network testing or diagnostics or sometimes sort out a VLAN problem I'm having and figuring out why it's not on the network that I assumed it should be on. A little bit of troubleshooting on some real hardware versus when I'm just doing it all virtually is sometimes I'm doing it virtually and I get some unexpected results and you go to hardware to figure out where the problem is. Now the blue cables you're looking at here are from Monoprice. They come in a variety of lengths and a variety of colors. I have some red, I have some blue. Leave a link to those if you're interested because color coding the lab looks cool. Mine's not exactly color coded. I mostly just wanted some shorter cables and then I seen they had different colors and I thought, well, why not make it a little bit more colorful? Maybe at some point I'll get obsessive and put everything to an exact color and have meaning to each one, but that's for a later date. Now, this is my studio lab versus I have a business and that office in Toledo has another lab. Technically it has two, it has one in the basement and we have one on the top floor where all the staff is and we have a middle floor that's being built out still. So there's plenty of future lab videos that I'll be doing as those things come. I've got a few scattered around the channel where you may have noticed I'm at a completely different location than here. And that is our Toledo office. So that's all future videos coming. So like, and subscribe to see some of those videos. And I don't really have a timeline because the construction takes a long time to finish things. And there's some visions for how I think we can do it. But of course, got to see how that goes. I will love to connect with you on my forums. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics, that is a great place where we can have the discussion. I'll leave lots of links to these things in case you want to buy any the hardware I mentioned. A lot of it's going to be affiliate links, but it does help out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Hit me up at LawrenceSystems.com to connect me with whatever socials I'm on when you find me there. And thanks. Lawrence Systems thanks our sponsors for their support.